And now you're sink. I can imagine that probably a couple years ago you had no idea where you were heading. Or no, I still don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up going to the Netherlands as a teenager quite a bit with my family. Mm -hmm. And there was one summer, I think it was uh, between my freshman year and my, uh, my sophomore year, first and second year. Um, I was talking with my father, I was like, oh, I think I want to go to Holland this summer. And he said, oh, why don't you try Prague? Um, in my day, Prague was kind of closed, it wasn't really an option for me, but maybe you might like it and find it more interesting than the Netherlands, or some, try something different. Mm -hmm. So I decided just to do the stereotypical interrail trip, uh, Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, and I, Prague just stuck to me. So yeah, I really, I quite enjoyed it, and... I did um, a study abroad in France the next year and visited Prague a couple times and said, oh, you know what, I think I'm going to move here after I finish my studies. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I was 23 and I haven't spent as much time working in the free world, so I actually decided to do what everyone else does and teach English, mm -hmm. even though that was something I didn't really want for a long-term career, but it got me started. <laughs> okay, and how, how did that work out for you? Um, I think about average. Um, to be honest, I don't know how many English teachers actually really wanted to teach English. It's just an excuse for people to go travel. Mm -hmm. And I actually learned a lot, though, about my own language and other languages. Actually, at least I studied a couple other languages before I learned how to teach, which actually is something a lot of native speakers don't have. Yeah, when I first came to Prague, I was expecting maybe one year, maybe... I don't know, I had a German guy I was thinking about living with, but I never really liked his place. I thought of going back to Holland, maybe, where I have heritage. Um, but somehow Prague kept me longer. Somehow Prague kept me for like over six years. <laughs> and I did have some frustrations with Prague, but I've also had so many good experiences. The frustrations feel like they didn't really exist. <laughs> I like the overall Czech mentality. Mm -hmm. Some people complain about it, but actually I like it. They are, they mind their own business. Most people here, you can pretty much do as you want as long as you aren't harming anyone. Mm -hmm. I like the humor. <laughs> I love the sense of humor here. I like, I like the literature as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just kind of like this, mm, do as you please, but don't bother me, don't wake up my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so crazy about the construction at 6 a.m. on some weekends, but <laughs> uh, I can get over it. <laughs> and well, uh, okay, and uh, some particular places in Prague that you love? Letna. I lived in Letna for five of these years, and Letna is it's a treasure. Mm -hmm. And I like Kolesiewice, but I guess Prague 7 in general, I would say. Okay. And uh, is there something that uh, you dislike? Um, actually maybe it's not so much of a Prague thing, it might be an overall Czech thing or overall Central Eastern Europe thing. I was doing work with some refugees a few years ago, and some of the general opinions by some people I've seen in Czech Republic, or when I was working at Škoda, for example, I would hear people say, oh, if you go to Budapest, you're actually going to see refugees raping people, like at the train station live. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. But actually, I kind of thank them in some ways because um, that's actually how I got involved helping them. One of them was telling me all these fake stories about what's going on in Budapest, so I actually went to go for the weekend myself and see what was going on. <laughs> yeah, and you've seen probably a lot of rapes. Yeah, so many. Yeah, yeah. No, really, it's just a bunch of kind of sad looking families not really yeah. knowing what to do next. <laughs> yeah. So I just like brought some some pizza and listened to some of the stories of 
their situation and found out like what they needed was information more than mm-hmm. <laughs> anything. Yeah. But it's not just a Czech thing. Look at the US, for example. And in Germany, even. Like, everyone thinks, oh, Germany's so accepting of refugees. Not really. I lived in a small German village for a little bit, and not all of them were accepting of <laughs> these refugees as well. So I can't really fault the Czech. Sometimes I think they don't quite understand the situation because it's mostly Czechs and a few Europeans and a few Vietnamese, but they haven't really dealt with multiculturalism to the extent as maybe Western Europe. <laughs> well, I ended up uh, going to Charles University mm-hmm. to get my master's degree in geopolitics and did different work for several NGOs and the travel company that goes to unrecognized states. <laughs> and uh, just sort of like the idea of working part-time for several different jobs and I was able to work remotely, so I just decided to do that for some months, which turned into over a year. Yeah, I've worked for several NGOs, and I like it, and I've gotten some nice experience, but I've always kind of wanted to do probably my own thing with it. Mm-hmm. So several ideas I'm, try- I'm thinking about, and I'm trying to think about how to go about them, how much money do I need to s- in startups, the red tape. But there's some jobs I'm looking around in Prague that, with like reputable places, such as Radio Free Europe, that maybe I might be lucky. Uh-huh. If anyone from Radio Europe's reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I have a blog. It's been a mm-hmm. side piece of mine for a couple of years. Unfortunately, this summer I lost it. But um, I'm, it, I'm bringing it back. And I would like to do some more things with my blog. I read a lot about travel. Uh, in particular, Eastern Europe and post-Soviet countries. I'm a bit of a geopolitics nerd because that's what my master's is in. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of these uh, unrecognized states, such as like Transnistria, Kazia, mm-hmm. and Kosovo, which Kosovo is still. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Czech Republic recognizes it, but Spain does not. Uh-huh. So, partially recognized. So, I tried to write about the travel aspects, but also the geopolitical aspects and how the locals see it. I try to combine all of it into mm-hmm. one article. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like travel articles, like things you must do with listicles. I'm trying to go away from that because there's so many of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't want it as well though to be um, like some academic article. Which, yeah. That's not enjoyable for most people. Maybe, well, maybe some of my friends might, but <laughs> not for a general audience. I'm trying to make it academic-ish, but not too much. Yeah, is, is there some like a message of encouragement you would have for somebody who's, you know, struggling with their direction? Oh, well, I'm also struggling with my direction, so um, this is sort of the blind leading the blind, but it's not the end of the world to be struggling with your direction. I've been kind of indecisive my entire adult life. Um, it's not a big deal. You don't have to have it all figured out. <laughs> I mean, really, we're all just trying to get our shit together, and it's going to get together mm-hmm. at some point. Or it's not. Just try to enjoy life as much as you can. Um, so yeah, if you want to do something, try it. Um, failure happens, and sometimes it can be fun. And you learn more from failure. Okay. So don't be afraid to screw it up. I mean, unless you like, if you have something like five hundred dollars and want to move to Prague, maybe I would try to tell you not to. But I mean, within reason, of course. <laughs>